I do a lot of talks with the police department because they're the ones involved in transporting persons with mental illness. And when you start talking to them initially, they give you kind of roll their eyes and go, well, I didn't become a police officer to be a social worker. Uh, I don't want to hear about a hug a thug program. And then you have to put a human face on it. And I talk to them about Kevin and I talk to them about people they know, try to find out if they know people who have mental illness. And I think too, when you see someone with a mental illness, like my son, you don't think that's gonna to happen to you. And so it's hard for you to have much empathy because you see somebody who's psychotic, who's on the sidewalk, who's screaming, who's possibly yelling profanities, and the policeman comes upon that and their reaction, of course, is authoritative. Um, when they see a parent, when they see a father, when they see someone who you know, was a Washington Post reporter and they look at it and go, wow, this happened to his kid. He couldn't get him help. His kid was tasered um, while being transported to a hospital. That could happen to me. And then they start thinking and they go, wait a minute, I know someone in my church, I know someone in my neighborhood. I, I gave a speech to 105 judges in Redmond, Oregon. Four of them had their kids in jails and prisons because of severe mental illnesses. And once they look beyond that to the human face, then you have a chance for empathy. And then you change the culture. Because what happens is it quits being those people and it starts being us and it starts being we. And that is what you want to strive for.